Hi, I'm Vespers. I'm an Ableton Live certified trainer and glitch hop music producer and live performer. And today we're going to be covering how to make sub bass. I've had a lot of people inquire and a lot of people thinking that sub bass is some kind of mystery. And creating the right sub bass is actually really, really simple. I thought it was way more complex than it is a long time ago, and I've discovered that it's actually super basic. So we're going to be using a couple of different ways to create sub bass today. But the first one we're going to cover is using a very popular VST synthesizer by Native Instruments called Massive. So we've got Live open. We're just going to drag an instance of Massive over onto our MIDI track. So we get Massive. And I'm going to insert a MIDI clip. It's really easy to insert a MIDI clip in a range view here with highlighting an area and then pressing Command and Shift and M. It inserts an 8-bar MIDI clip. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw in a nice low note here. We're just going to draw in a C0 and bring that note out the full eight bars. So Massive's default sound is going to sound like this. So let's get Massive open. When we open Massive, You'll see by default it has three oscillators activated. We're going to deactivate these first two because we only need one oscillator. First thing we're going to do is go in here and choose our waveform. Now sub bass is used with a sine wave. So you can see these two here are sine and square, sine and triangle. Doesn't matter which one you pick. I'm going to use sine and square. And with the wavetable position knob, we move it all the way over to the left, which means it's going to be 100% sine wave. So here's what that difference sounds like. Now, if you're not using headphones that have decent drivers on them or decent sized studio monitor speakers with a sub, you probably won't even be able to hear this. So now that we've got our sine wave there, I'm just gonna, I think the uh, note I programmed in might be a little on the low side. Yeah, it is. So I'm gonna highlight this note and you can actually shift the whole thing up a full octave by holding the shift key and pressing the up arrow. Cool, so now we've got C1. Let's go back to Massive. And you'll notice that the first thing is you hear the note hit and then it decreases in volume. We don't want that. So we're gonna go over here to our envelope and this is our master envelope. You can see it's uh, mapped out to our amp. And you can see why it's decreasing in volume because we have a lower sustain level than its maximum that it hits. So we're gonna take the level, we're gonna crank that all the way up to the top and then we're going to take our release and we're going to cut our release off so that it's pretty much zero. Okay, this will change the sound so it'll be one nice solid sound. And we're going to back off our attack so it's hitting at the very beginning as well. Perfect. That's what we want. So, a basic sine wave. We've changed our envelope. Now what we're going to do is we're going to give the sound a bit of a thump to the front end. And the way we do that is using another envelope. So we're going to take this envelope right here and we're going to drag the envelope so it maps out to our pitch. And what this will allow us to do is modulate the pitch with this envelope. You can see here we're getting positive pitch modulation. It's starting the pitch higher and it's gradually, gradually backing it down. So we want to play with our envelope here again to mess with things a little bit. So we're going to decrease our decay time, we're going to decrease our level. There we go. Okay, we're starting to get the sound that we want. You can hear that thump to the front end of the note. Perfect. And we're going to back this off a little bit. Incidentally, this is also how you create synthesized kick drums. So we want a little bit of a thump, a little thumpy front end to the note. All right, next, I always find it's good to use a little bit of LFO modulation so it's not just one straight, steady tone. We can use a little bit of LFO modulation on the pitch as well. So we're going to take our LFO here. We're going to drag it over again to pitch. And for the purposes of demonstrating it, I'm going to crank it way higher than I normally would so you can hear what this sounds like. OK, 
Okay. Now, obviously, that's way too much, so we're going to back it off. We just want a little bit of modulation. And we can play with our LFO tempo, too. Perfect. You'll see if you want to really fine tune the modulation amounts in here, on the left hand side is the course adjustment. So if I click my mouse in there, it goes up and down by pretty large values. And then if I take my mouse on the right hand side, I can go up and down in fine increments here. So here we're finding that uh, you know a positive amount of just a little bit is working really nicely. And this is where it sounds nice and sweet in here. kind of just gives it a little bit of a pulsating feeling. So that's pretty much the long and the short of it. It's, it's very easy to create sub bass. You can change the amount of the thump if you want. And you can change the amount that the LFO is wobbling the pitch a little bit. But I find these settings work really, really well. And this is the same sub bass patch I use in pretty much everything. Last thing we want to do is make sure that we save. So we just go save as. And in this case, I'm going to save this as Vespers Subbase. And we're done.